So, here's a nice simple setup. They give you a binomial. It's worth pointing out this binomial is a bit gross looking. You've got numbers in these coefficients. You've got an x squared. You've got a, a 1 over x, an x to the negative 1, if you like. And then this is one of those times where they'll supply a value for x. And if you know that, then you can work out not just the greatest coefficient, but the greatest term. Now it's that distinction that we really want to nail down. So I'm going to try and make it as clear as possible and just re-emphasize to you that these objects are different and how they are different. Okay, so let's begin. In order to find the greatest coefficient or the greatest term, you need to know what each individual term looks like so you can compare them in some way. Okay, so where I always begin is by writing the general term. Okay, now Almost regardless of whether the question is a coefficient or a term question, I will ask for, or I will write down the general term first, because as you'll see in a couple of minutes, and as you actually know, the greatest coefficient is part of, the coefficient is part of the term. So if you can write down the whole term, you will also have the coefficient. And in this case, I'm asking you for both, so therefore we might as well start with this guy, okay? So, every term in this expansion is going to have three components. Are you sick of hearing this yet? There's going to be the binomial coefficient. There will be some number of, what are the other two objects? Some number of the 2x squareds, right? And some number of the 3 on x's, okay? Um, you'll either have more or less of these and they will balance out as you progress through the expansion, okay? So, let's write those three pieces. The first one will be the binomial coefficient. If this is the general term, it's going to be the kth term, but what will the top of the, um, of the binomial coefficient be in this case? It's going to be a 10, very good, and I get that from the power. Now just one really, really minor note, and um, a few of you have been doing this, but I even caught myself doing it, which is why I think it's worth an extra reminder. You're going to be writing lots of k's in this topic, and it's not the only topic. Uh, it comes up a little bit in exponential growth and decay as well. We frequently use k. I'm going to encourage you, just watch, I'm going to encourage you to write your k in a very particular way. I'm going to encourage you to write it as one line and then a second line, or then line thing. Okay, here is why. If you are lazy and you write your k's in one motion like this, you kind of go like this, right? And like that, that's sort of okay, okay? But if you're writing smaller and faster and under pressure, your K in one motion very quickly turns into this, which kind of turns into that, which turns into that. And you're like, wait, well, what letter was that? And guess what? You have N's flying around here as well as K's, and you don't want to be that person, some of you are in this room already, who misreads your own working and as a consequence gets the wrong answer. Okay? So the way to get out of that is to write your K's properly, do a line, do a second thing, now you recognize that letter. Okay? All right, so there's the binomial coefficient. There will be some number of these things, and there will also be some number of these things. Now, I pause before I put the number of those things because at this point you have a choice, don't you? Okay? Um, one of these is going to be climbing up and one's going to be climbing down. Yeah, question? Uh, I've got to write y equals 4 over 9. Uh, yeah, I'm not doing that because there's no y's in this. Okay. Yeah? Part 2. Okay, so when we think about this, just pause before we actually write it down. Don't write this down, just think about it. Do you think it matters, ultimately? Do you think it matters whether I put k here and 10 minus k here? As compared to whether I put k here and 10 minus k here. Do you think it ultimately matters? It shouldn't matter because if I can put either, they should give me the same expansion in the end, right? The difference will be. Um, you know, say for example the first term, okay, we know the binomial coefficient will always start with 1, right? If uh, we started with the k here, then when k equals 0, which is the, the first term I'm going to write down, okay, how many of these guys do I have? None. So you'll have um, 10 of these, right? 10 minus 0. So your first term will be 1 times uh, 3 on x to the power of 10. That'll be your first term and then you'll write all of the way to the end, okay? Now, if I chose the other way around and chose um, to make this one the k, right? Well, then your the first term that you will write down will not be ten of these guys; it'll be ten of this guy. But then you will climb down and you'll end where the previous one started. So you'll get the same thing. Okay? Now I'm going to ask that question again. If we know that ultimately it doesn't matter, and I can choose either of them, is there one that you might prefer? 
Hmm. Any any takers? Who likes the orange one? Anyone? That's the one with the K here. The 10 minus K there. Okay. Who like? Yeah, I see some hands. Who likes the blue one? Okay, more people. Who has no opinion? You're like, they look the same to me. Okay, all right, sure. Um, it's okay to have no opinion, and it's okay to like, you know, whichever one you want. I'm just gonna put a vote in for going with this one. Okay, now you will get the same answer out. In fact, the first time I did this question, I did it the other way around, okay? Now, why might we, what might we prefer this one? Okay, it's just a, a thing to try and avoid seeing the mistakes. This power here is simpler, do you agree? K is simpler than 10 minus K. 10 minus K is easier to screw up, okay? Especially with that minus sign in there. But what the K is going to interact with is this guy. Now that has a negative power. Do you see that? That's X to the negative one. So I'm just going to try and avoid having like negatives playing with each other if I possibly can, okay? But whichever way you do it, and I invite you if you want, you know, you don't have to write it the way I'm about to. Um, whichever way you choose, we are going to arrive at the same answer at the end, and that's one of the lovely things about this, okay? So this is the general uh, term. Now, what I want to pull out of here is the coefficient, right? So you can see these numbers, the twos and the threes, they're going to interact with the binomial coefficient, but I want to get those x's out the way. Okay, does that make sense? So let's now carefully break this apart into a few more pieces. Here's the binomial coefficient. We'll just leave it there for now. Uh, the two, I want that bit. The x squared, I want to separate that bit out. Okay, so I'm going to have this many twos, and I'm going to have this many x squareds because they come from the same expansion. Uh, then over here, I'm going to have this many threes, and I'm going to take this opportunity to write, because I'm going to get these to put together in a second, I'm going to write the next thing not as a fraction, but with a negative index. Okay, so I'm going to write it as x to the negative k. Very good. There's a negative one, and then there's a k. Happy times. Okay. So at this point, I'm now going to gather all my coefficient together because I'm leaning towards that part of the question. And that will leave this number here dancing with this number here and this number here. Those are all of the numbers, okay, the numerical part of this. And now here come our pronumerals. So x squared to the power of that, that x, that's x to the 20 minus 2k. 20 minus 2k. But then you've got another minus k hanging out here. So what will the ultimate power of x be? 20 minus 3k. Ta-da! Okay, now at this point here, um, this is a process you need to become pretty comfortable with because you don't just use this particular method, these steps, you don't just use them to solve the greatest coefficient or the greatest term. Um, another question which you will much more frequently encounter, especially at the HSC level, is find the term with a coefficient, sorry, find the term which has an x to the power of, and then they'll give you a power, like say, uh, x to the power of 14, okay? If you wanted the x to the 14 term, have a look. What would you want this to be? What would you do with k? Yeah, you want 20 minus 6 to get 14. So you would say k equals 2, right? And now you can evaluate that and off you go, right? So this is a, a process that is worth investing in. You need to do that carefully. So at this point, I've got the general term. Okay, you've already seen before Mrs. Lees has mentioned that we use the capital T to indicate the whole theme, the term, and then we will either use a C for coefficient or a little t, because it's just, it's just a part of it, to indicate the coefficient part that we're interested in. So you can see I can read that off from here. It's just all the stuff that's not x's. Does that make sense? So I'm going to do that right now. Okay, now if this is a part that you have struggled with before, I want you to like take another color out or a highlighter or something like that and highlight for yourself right now. If you are finding the greatest term, you are dealing with this guy, right? If you are finding the greatest coefficient, you are dealing with this guy and they are related, clearly, but they are significantly different objects, okay? 